Badwin Jin? The sequence of movements introduced here are best known as the standing exercises of Ba Duan Jin, the famous eight pieces of brocade, or eight treasures, with origins as obscure as Qigong itself. According to the Shaolin Buddhist tradition, this health and longevity practice was introduced by the Bada Dharma in his book Yi Jin Jing or Sinyu Changing Classic, as part of a longer set of Qigong exercises, from which the eight best moves were distilled. These have been, at a later date, extended to include twelve movements in total, into what is commonly known as Ba Duan Jin today. Other sources date these exercises from much earlier, and some legends even claim Ba Duan Jin to be originated from one of the eight legendary immortals of the Taoist traditions. Regardless of its origin, Ba Duan Jin practice can benefit your health greatly, both physiologically and mentally, positively affecting your joints, muscles, bones and help to relieve stress and anxiety. Often called the Chinese yoga, Ba Duan Jin is probably the most simple form of moving meditation, after walking. Most Qigong practices are very similar to the popularly known Tai Chi Quan or Tai Chi Chuan forms, often seen to be practiced by people of all ages and backgrounds. Sharing a very similar basic principle, the most important difference between Qigong and Tai Chi Quan is the latter being a form of martial art and could in fact be used for self-defense. If practiced for such purpose, Tai Chi Quan movements have real martial applications which could either inflict damage or be used to defend against attacks. The reason for Tai Chi Quan being excluded from this book is partly that it mostly consists of long and elaborate forms which could be difficult to learn from a book or without adequate guidance, like an instructor or teacher. In Tai Chi Quan, the practitioner moves almost continuously, while Qigong forms often involve some static positions with the movements leading from one position to another. Neither Qigong nor Tai Chi Quan is in fact superior or inferior to the other, but Ba Duan Jin Qigong is probably somewhat easier to learn from books or descriptions. The movement sequences described over the following pages are only one of many approaches known and practiced today. Known practices of Ba Duan Jin are as many as there are people teaching them. With no claim to be more or less beneficial than others, the following exercises will focus as much on physical health of the external body, the bones, sinews and musculature, than the health of internal organs, considered most broadly, when talking about Qigong. The movements of the standing exercises of Ba Duan Jin can be performed at any time of the day, with or without previous warm-up and preparation. The sequence consists of very gentle movements and is thought to affect the health of the whole body, including the limbs, all internal organs and the triple burner, consisting roughly of the inner cavities of the torso, recognized as a separate organ in Chinese medicine. Although it may be performed any time of the day, it is particularly useful to perform the sequence, or at least the first movement. In the morning, as soon as you get out of bed, to help start the day, once again around midday, and lastly right before going to bed. It is also a great way to finish off regular sitting meditation practice, although in this case it is probably most beneficial to continue with a full sequence of Ba Duan Jin. As it includes some movement and stretching of your legs, that could feel numb and restricted of circulation after longer periods of sitting. The sequence can be performed in one of two ways, the soft way would be done with totally relaxed limbs, concentrating inwardly on your breath, eyes closed. The hard way is performed with a gentle stretch of the limbs, creating imaginary resistance against your palms as you push away from the body. Or clenching the fists hard, where applicable, still focusing on the breathing, but giving equal considerations to the movement and physiological energy involved, with eyes open. The latter method is possibly most suitable for early morning and midday practices, while the former would be suitable as a complementary method after sitting meditation and before going to bed. How to breathe during practice For the following sequence of movements, you may choose your preferred breathing method. The suggested breathing technique would be embryonic breathing, or abdominal breathing on any level. Even thought the Ba Duan Jin forms presented in this book have their origins in Buddhist traditions and Buddhists would usually advocate abdominal breathing, for the individual practice this is not important. You may use, full, abdominal breathing or embryonic breathing, as is more comfortable, feels more natural, whichever helps the practice. It is useful to feel the energy in the Dan Tian, as would be the effect of embryonic breathing, although not essential. Ba Duan Jin can be practiced purely as a mobility exercise and gentle stretching. To become a moving form of Qigong meditation, 
the same breathing should be practiced as during sitting qigong meditation. This will allow for greater awareness of the qi accumulating in the body. Of the other breathing techniques introduced in this book, square breathing is the least suitable for the practice, as the movements that follow will be very much synchronized with one's breaths and there is often no room for the pause phase. Diaphragmatic breathing may also prove less useful, as the depth of breath is crucial during practice, and as the exercise involves physical movement, it is most possible that your body would need a lot more air than diaphragmatic breathing would allow for. Tongue Positioning Slide your tongue across your upper palate, you will find a little recess, it fits into almost naturally. This is the position to keep your tongue throughout practice, as it is said to close energy circuits in the body, also, on a more subliminal level it does help maintaining proper posture. Foot Positioning You would ideally be barefooted, unless you are standing on a cold floor. Your feet should grab the floor throughout practice. Gong Fu students will probably need no introduction to the concept of grabbing the floor with the feet. This method may be observed by the non-martial artist practitioner as well. Holding your feet this way will help maintaining proper posture, providing the minimal amount of tension necessary, it helps to feel grounded and is said to aid the various energy systems of the body, throughout the practice. It is important to understand how to grab the floor with your feet. Though it does involve curling up your toes, it does not mean fully curling them up. To grab the floor, stand with feet shoulder width apart, your weight equally distributed over both legs. Now, attempt to curl your toes, while at the same time pressing them against the floor. Let the natural resistance of the floor stop your attempt of toe curling and stay in this position. To better understand why this is commonly referred to as grabbing the floor, or if you have still problems picturing the way to do this, you can try standing on a towel, on a slippery surface. Like a wooden or stone floor, and try to make a little lump of the towel right under the pits of your toes, without fully curling your toes up. Once you get a hang of it, try it without a towel, it will most likely have become easier. Preparing for Bodwin Jin Practice The following movements are closely synchronized with your breathing and it is very important you keep them in synchrony. If you feel your saliva accumulating any time during practice, just swallow it and continue. Do not keep saliva accumulating in your mouth, always swallow it immediately. Stand with feet shoulder width apart, toes pointing forwards, feet grabbing the floor. Gently tuck your tailbone in, a slight, squeeze of the gluteus muscles, or buttocks, having your knees relaxed, and your pelvis open. Stand tall, with your crown elevated high. Imagine your spine is a string of pearls, hanging from your crown loosely. Rest your hands beside your body, hanging naturally. Now slide your tongue up to its resting position. Close your eyes. Whether you are going to continue the sequence with eyes open or closed, it is best. To close your eyes here for a moment. Focus on your breathing. Take three deep inhales and exhales, inhaling naturally, followed by a long, slow exhale. Do control your breath, trying to breathe as deeply as you can, but do not try to slow its natural rhythm. Observe it, as it may slow down naturally, following the long exhales. While going through the movements, it is important to move slowly and smoothly. Don't pause, unless the sequence calls for a pause. Between the positions you hold, always keep continuously moving, fluidly, smoothly, even between inhales and exhales. If there is an abrupt change in the direction of a movement, try to make the transition as smooth as possible, without pausing, unless a pause is called for. Basic Stances There are five basic stances known in traditional Gong Fu and Qigong practice. To practice Bodwin Jin, it is only important to be familiar with two of these, which will be used throughout the different sequences. Mabu or horse stance. The first and most important stance is horse stance. This stance is well known and practiced across different styles and schools of martial arts and also adopted to Qigong because of its major benefits on one's health and strength. Mabu is a difficult stance to correctly hold for an extended period of time, although there are easier variations of it as well. This stance strengthens the legs, the knees and the back, while helping you to feel grounded. It is a very stable body position, due to the center of gravity being quite low. To stand in Mabu, start with feet wider than shoulder width apart. The exact width of the feet advised, would vary from school to school. For Qigong practice you should experiment and find the way you find most comfortable. Your feet should be pointing straight forward, 
or if that proves difficult, turning out as little as you can maintain. Grab the floor with your feet and slowly lower your torso, by bending the knees. Ideally in the lowest position your thighs would be parallel with the ground, but this is not at all essential. Do not go lower than parallel thighs. The position of the knees is very important, they should always follow your toes. This is the anatomically safest and most effective position to stay in horse stance, so make an effort to keep your knees in line with the toes. Regardless of the depth of your stance, when you look down, you should always see the tip of your toes, that meaning that the knees never extend over them. Your hand position is not yet important, you can have them in a praying position in front of your chest, as this would help to keep your back straight. There are many variations of Mabu some of them are meant to be more challenging, while others would make it easier for the beginner to hold the stance over a longer period of time, some of these are pictured on the next page. Gongbu or Bow and Arrow Stance This stance is usually the second, each Gong Fu practitioner would learn, and it is also very important in Qigong. Unlike Mabu, this is an asymmetrical stance. Start in a slightly broader horse stance. Starting with a left Gong Bu, you would turn your left foot out in a 45 degree or slightly greater angle, then turn your torso towards the left, placing more body weight on the left foot. Your left knee should never go over your toes, to keep your knee position healthy. This is very important with both Ma Bu and Gong Bu. Ideally, your shin would be perpendicular to the ground, even in the lowest position. In the meantime, your right leg would straighten out behind you, never losing contact with the ground. Do not let your right heel rise, rather turn your foot in an angle, that would allow it to rest on the floor. Your hands come in beside your hips. You should feel a stretch in your right calf and your right hip flexor. Approximately 70% of your body weight should be on your left foot now. Hold for a few seconds, then repeat to the other side, pausing for a moment in Mabu, before you turn to the right. These two stances, Mabu and Gong Bu and transitions between them will be essential in some of the movements of Ba Duan Jin. Find a variation and depth that suits your strength and flexibility, but always be aware to perform the stances correctly throughout your practice. In the beginning, it helps to practice the stances alone, timing yourself as you do so. Start with 2-5 to five seconds in each stance, then gradually work your way up to at least 30 seconds in each. Practice will strengthen your legs and back and enhance your Qigong practice. If you master these stances, you would be able to concentrate on the movements and breathing, worrying less about standing correctly or getting too tired. On the following page is the bullet points, marking instructional paragraphs, and most image captions, will be omitted, as most of the text will consist of instructions, while the images will be illustrations for the text. The breathing phases, such as inhale and exhale will be marked with bold type. When you see inhale, you should continue inhaling, until you read exhale. When you read exhale, you should continue doing so, until you see inhale. There will be no need to hold your breath after inhaling or pause it after an exhale. Pace your breathing in synchrony with the movements, try to breathe smoothly and continuously. Note for the Kindle edition, while all care has been taken to try and preserve the original layout of the printed book, Kindle's fluid layout makes this quite difficult. The following instructions with the adjoining illustrations have been organized to pages, as much as such fluid layout would allow. This is to ensure that most of the illustrations will stay right beneath the instructions and always on the same page. This would work best with font size set to 3 on your reader or reader app. Wherever such forced pagination appears, these intentional page breaks have been marked with the ellipsis, symbol for consistency and to ensure an undisturbed reading experience. When you see this symbol, it means the next page still contains instructions belonging to this movement, and so you should keep on moving with it, until you see the OM symbol, marking the end of each sequence. If you are reading on a Kindle Fire HD or larger, it would be fairly easy to follow these, although on some larger screens, the images would possibly look too small and not filling all the available space. Unfortunately, for smaller screens and especially on e-ink deuses, this pagination might appear out of proportion. The symbol should usually align with the bottom of the screen, wherever they stand directly under images. Your feet should be pointing straight forward, or if that proves difficult, turning out as little as you can maintain. Starting position for Mabu. Grab the floor with your feet and slowly lower your torso, by bending the knees. 
Ideally in the lowest position your thighs would be parallel with the ground, but this is not at all essential. Do not go lower than parallel thighs. The position of the knees is very important, they should always follow your toes. This is the anatomically safest and most effective position to stay in horse stance, so make an effort to keep your knees in line with the toes. Regardless of the depth of your stance, when you look down, you should always see the tip of your toes, that meaning that the knees never extend over them. Mabu or horse stance unlike when you are going to a squat, your buttocks should not stick out very far, only slightly. Tuck in your tailbone, but not too forcedly. Overall, your body should look as flat as possible, if viewed from the side. Do not tuck all your buttocks underneath, let your gluteal muscles take part of the work, and do not allow your knees to go over your toes as this would cause pain in the knee and damage your joints in the long term. Broad variations, if horse stance seems too easy, or become so with practice, a more challenging form is to broaden the stance, while keeping the thighs as parallel to the ground as you can manage. High variations, if horse stance is too challenging, try to keep your body in a higher position, with a slighter bend at the knee. This way you will be able to keep a good stance without much exertion. Do this if you are less experienced or trained, or if you would like to keep your cheek on practice less physically demanding. Your hand position is not yet important, you can have them in a praying position in front of your chest, as this would help to keep your back straight. There are many variations of Mabu some of them are meant to be more challenging, while others would make it easier for the beginner to hold the stance over a longer period of time, some of these are pictured on the next page. Gongbu or Bow and Arrow Stance This stance is usually the second, each Gong Fu practitioner would learn, and it is also very important in Qigong. Unlike Mabu, this is an asymmetrical stance. Start in a slightly broader horse stance. Starting with a left gong bu, you would turn your left foot out in a 45 degree or slightly greater angle, then turn your torso towards the left, placing more body weight on the left foot. Your left knee should never go over your toes, to keep your knee position healthy. This is very important with both ma bu and gong bu. Ideally, your shin would be perpendicular to the ground, even in the lowest position. In the meantime, your right leg would straighten out behind you, never losing contact with the ground. Do not let your right heel rise, rather turn your foot in an angle, that would allow it to rest on the floor. Your hands come in beside your hips. You should feel a stretch in your right calf and your right hip flexor. Approximately 70% of your body weight should be on your left foot now. Hold for a few seconds, then repeat to the other side, pausing for a moment in Mabu, before you turn to the right. Gong Bu or Bow and Arrow Stance In the low variation of Gong Bu your left thigh would be closer to parallel with the ground. These two stances, Ma Bu and Gong Bu and transitions between them will be essential in some of the movements of Ba Duan Jin. Find a variation and depth that suits your strength and flexibility, but always be aware to perform the stances correctly throughout your practice. In the beginning, it helps to practice the stances alone, timing yourself as you do so. Start with 2-5 to five seconds in each stance, then gradually work your way up to at least 30 seconds in each. Practice will strengthen your legs and back and enhance your Qigong practice. If you master these stances, you would be able to concentrate on the movements and breathing, worrying less about standing correctly or getting too tired. On the following pages the bullet points, marking instructional paragraphs, and most image captions, will be omitted, as most of the text will consist of instructions, while the images will be illustrations for the text. The breathing phases, such as inhale and exhale will be marked with bold type. When you see inhale, you should continue inhaling, until you read exhale. When you read exhale, you should continue doing so, until you see inhale. There will be no need to hold your breath after inhaling, or pause it after an exhale. Pace your breathing in synchrony with the movements, try to breathe smoothly and continuously. Note for the Kindle edition, while all care has been taken to try and preserve the original layout of the printed book, Kindle's fluid layout makes this quite difficult. The following instructions with the adjoining illustrations have been organized to pages, as much as such fluid layout would allow. This is to ensure that most of the illustrations will stay right beneath the instructions and always on the same page. This would work best with font size set to 3 on your reader or reader app. Wherever such forced pagination appears, these intentional page breaks have been marked with the ellipsis, 
symbol for consistency and to ensure an undisturbed reading experience. When you see this symbol, it means the next page still contains instructions belonging to this movement, and so you should keep on moving with it, until you see the OM symbol, marking the end of each sequence. If you are reading on a Kindle Fire HD or larger, it would be fairly easy to follow these, although on some larger screens, the images would possibly look too small and not filling all the available space. Unfortunately, for smaller screens and especially on e-ink deuses, this pagination might appear out of proportion. The symbol should usually align with the bottom of the screen, wherever they stand directly under images. If there is some text before the symbol, it is possible that it would flow to the next screen on smaller devices. If you find that on a larger device the symbols flow to the top of the next page, please decrease the reader's font size temporarily. While much care has been taken to eliminate unnecessary white spaces and other issues, any feedback regarding layout problems will be much appreciated by the author and editor. Preferably via email, you will find the author's email address at the beginning of the book. Thank you for your understanding and enjoy the rest of the book, the author. Opening and closing moves The opening moves before and the closing moves after each of the six combined sequences. The eight or twelve movements combined into six sequences, introduced below, will be described here. The function of these opening and closing moves is mostly to regulate the breathing, the heart rate and the energy systems. The opening move. Stand upright, with feet shoulder width apart. With an inhale, start slowly lifting your hands, palms facing upwards, fingers pointing at each other, as if you were about to wash your face and were just lifting some water up, elbows pointing out. When your hands reach chest height, just under your neck, turn your palms down, and with an exhale start pushing them down. Just like you were trying to press a large ball under water, keeping the elbows out, until you reach the bottom position, where you cannot reach further with palms facing down. Then turn your palms onto the starting position. Repeat this movement for three inhales and exhales. This concludes the opening move. You will need to do this before every other movement sequence. The closing move. Start to inhale and turn your palms towards each other, then begin pulling them away, leading from the elbow, fingers facing each other, palms up, until you make a large circle with your arms. Then, still inhaling, straighten your arms up, lifting them sideways, until you reach overhead, your palms never changing position, your hands almost hanging loosely. Once your outstretched arms are pointing up, turn your palms inside, facing each other, and fully extend your arms upwards, fingers pointing up, while continuing to inhale. As you begin to exhale, bring your hands down, with your palms never changing position, like you were lowering a ball between them, until you reach the height of your chest. At which point your palms turn downwards, elbows pointing to the sides, and as you continue to exhale, keep pushing them down, as if you were trying to submerge the ball in chest deep water. Repeat the last inhale and exhale, with the corresponding moves two more times. This concludes the closing move. You will need to do it after every individual movement or sequence. Some of the movements that will follow are combined into longer sequences, as could be seen from their respective titles or names. Such sequences are usually the combinations of movements that are logical continuation of another one. Such combinations are not essential and the movements can be performed in any order. This is one proposed sequence only. You may alter it as long as you keep the movements accurate and the breathing right.